backbone. Well, here's the evolutionary story, and uh, I'm sure you'll all be convinced because we have drawings showing the entire sequence from a primitive reptile down here, uh, unlike living reptiles today, which are up a little higher here, from a primitive reptile up through the different reptiles, the mammal-like reptiles, right up to mammals. What has happened? The reptile jaw has several bones, whereas our jaw just has really one bone on each side. And some of these bones of the reptile jaw are said by evolutionists to have migrated up into the ear, including the hinge part of the jaw, which must have made things difficult for a while for the poor reptile, <laughs> moved up into the ear and became the little bones of the ear that we've just discussed. And here's the whole sequence, which ought to worry you a little bit because they're lined up just perfectly. When you get to the top, you can see here the little bones of the ear that have formed and we're down to one bone in the jaw. Down here, we just have one bone in the ear and all these bones in the jaw. If you read the fine print in the article, however, you find that the first one at the bottom is a hypothetical organism. Uh, this one is a hypothetical organism. The middle ear structures, which are the most significant here that they're talking about, are also hypothetical. Well, what about the rest? They're not too bad, are they? Well, the author admits that these are not necessarily in true ancestor-descendant relationships, uh, and uh, that uh, most have been unknown and undescribed structures uh, that are reconstructed, and that the actual sizes are not uniform. So. Uh,